Okay, here's my second CAD weld. And uh, it doesn't look pretty, but you know, it did the job. It's welded on there permanently. So the buried copper cable there, theoretically it should be buried at least 30 inches underneath the ground if you're making a run like this. Uh, the bare copper would itself act like a grounding rod. Uh, or at least that's what they say in the uh, instruction paper. But uh, I'm not too worried about it. I just dug it in six inches deep. Just enough for me to cover it so it, it would prevent it from being a uh, trip hazard. So that's all I'm going to do. I think that's a little bit excessive for my case. So uh, if you're doing six inches and you have cable that's uh, insulated, you can just leave the insulation on. I mean, it won't, it won't bother you. I had bare copper without the insulation, so that's what I'm using. Okay, here's another example of uh, CAD weld. And uh, we already did two up there. And this location here, some time ago, some property owners, a couple of owners past myself, uh, erected this fence. Well, they put a pole right here. And Murphy's Law, they put it right in, in the middle of this conduit that's going up to the hill where the antenna mast is. And severed this line here, so I had to dig it out and run some cables. Uh, through it and then weatherproof it you know just a clues job here but anyway I, I figure I'd take the opportunity to ground this point right here because this point right here is almost exactly midpoint between the garage and the antenna mast so I got a couple of uh, cables here hooked up to the uh, outside of the uh, hard line there just like up on the hill and I have an eight foot of uh, ground rod buried on on this location here so since I got this all excavated anyway and I was messing around here I might as well do a a, a grounding point at this location here because some residual uh, electricity from the lightning strike will travel down the outside connector no matter if that area up there has covered the bulk of it this is going to take care of some remaining point mid at midpoint and once again this is not typical of a, of a regular installation my my scenario here is a little bit different and I'm just taking advantage of what I got to work with okay so this is the third CAD weld that I'm doing I got it molded in there and this time I got two smaller cables feeding in through one side but I combined them to where it would add up to the diameter of the access hole here, the number four gauge, and it's going straight through. So I don't, I don't think I'll have any problems of uh, the molten copper uh, spilling out. So here's my shake charge. Put in the media. You leave some on top so you can help it catch. that guys got to be careful with this stuff mm -hmm. right Play well here with two. right so we'll let this cool off and see how it turned out so there it is weld number three I got a solid connection again a little bit uh, sloppy but it's bonded and that's what's important this is all gonna get buried so it doesn't matter how it looks so I just gotta weatherproof the rest of this here bury it and uh, forget it all right, let's move on to the next one. Good. 
So there's the third grounding rod buried with the uh, CAD weld uh, exothermic weld on the ground wire and the grounding rod and I don't have to dig it up. It'll last me a lifetime. All right. I just go see a minute. Here's the fourth one. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and pour in the media. Oh. Hey, don't mess it up, Sadie. <laughs> so on the bottom of the on the bottom of this, there's the accelerant, and you need that to pour on top. If you don't, you'll never ignite this. And the powder turns uh, a little bit lighter. I got some metal flashing here to protect the cable, the main cable that's on the other side. This is somewhat of a uh, tight quarters. So let's see if I burn my house down or not. So we'll let that cool off and see how that look what that what that looks like. I'll stand around for fire watch just in case. So here's the fourth uh, Cadwell bond. And this particular grounding rod is was existing to the property before I got here. So I don't know the history of this. I don't know if it's going four feet, okay. two feet, or okay. eight feet under. So okay. I wasn't going to use this because uh, I don't know the history of it. But at the last moment, I oh, decided okay. to use it just in case it was oh, eight feet. Okay. Just in case it was eight feet deep. So I'll use this as a grounding rod as well. So uh, I have it teed. One is going to come up this way and go into a, a bus bar which I'll build a little bit later the second video I would imagine of this series and then it's teed off over to my fourth grounding rod that I've purchased which I what was I was gonna do and I have it approximately eight feet away from there to to have the same characteristics as the grounding rods on top of the hill uh, energy will be dumped in that location there if there is any by this by this uh, distance if there's any residual or if it's saturated the ground is saturated of electricity over on that end the remainder will will be dumped over here like I said this is overkill for for a house but uh, since I had the materials and the extra stuff uh, I might as well just put it in uh, I ran out of one shot uh, CAD wells so uh, this is going to be done in another day but I think I've done four and you guys by this time get the picture so at, at the very last moment uh, later on when I do get it I'm going to dig a trench to bury this cable here bury this down B bury, bury this on here CAD weld it it'll be done